Greetings everyone. Sri Lanka's dry zone jungles are teeming with the high density of leopards, which is a fact that most of us know and that we have come to love. But knowing is not enough. There were still many unanswered questions. Were we observing the same leopard time and time again? Where did male cubs disperse after leaving their mothers at maturity? Who was mating with who? These and other questions kept on coming up and inspired the way forward for our ongoing leopard identification project. It was several years back when founder and managing director of Leopard Trails, Radish Selamuth, was on one of his initial visits to a prominent game reserve in South Africa that he learned about the easy, efficient and guest-friendly technique of leopard identification. Being ever so resourceful, Radish soon envisioned a plan to utilize this technique in the Yala and Wilpath National Parks. It was extremely helpful that uh, the team at Londolosi and many other lodges in the Sabi Sands Game Reserve were ever so ready to share their wealth of knowledge and pass on what they learned to us. Based on that, the guiding team at Leopard Trails was trained to name and to identify leopards according to this new technique. And soon, they all started contributing images to a meticulously managed database. Through the passage of time, it was possible to draw up family trees or lineages of the leopards that were observed. Also, the behavioral studies that focus on the differences between individual leopards rely on accurate recognition of individuals and the ability to follow them through time. Today, the team at Leopard Trails thrives on a culture of storytelling around the leopards of Yala and Wilpatu. No even safari ends without the guiding team sharing their sightings with each other in the guide's quarters and the gathered information is thereafter entered into a centralized system. Individual leopards are now instantly recognized at sightings. It's almost become like meeting someone you know on the road because that's what the leopards mean to us at Leopard Trails, friends and family. And guests are taught how to identify individuals. After an evening game drive huddled around the campfire, guides recite stories involving individual character traits, lineages, and unique sightings. The saga is constantly evolving. Naming an individual leopard starts when we have a clear portrait shot of that particular leopard. There are few whiskers bearing horizontal spot rows in the leopard's muzzle. The top whisker bearing spot row is used as the reference line or, or the indicating line. Then we count the number of spots between the indicating line and the nose in each side and state as a ratio. The first number refers to the right cheek and the second to the leopard's left cheek. When we count these whisker spots, it is easy to get confused with one or more spots along the nose line. As we focus only on whisker spots, we ignore the spots along the nose line. Given that, most leopards will have no more than five spots aside. This gives 25 possible ratios. With the purpose of bestowing a meaningful name on the leopard, we state the name of the territory or the area that leopard was born in front of the spot ratio. The guiding team will gather together and discuss back and forth for a while about a suitable name based on the areas the particular leopard is frequently seen. Behind the spot ratio, we state the sex of the leopard. But there is the possibility that there will be a few leopards even in the same area with the same combination of spots. When individuals have the same spot ratios, it can become quite confusing. But thankfully, the patterns or the configuration are most often different. Even at the odd case where the whisker spot configuration matches, we do have contingencies where we can still look for combinations on the forehead, spots under the eye, nose color, differences in eye color, prominent scars or the other visible injuries, prominent spots elsewhere, sex, size and the territory to differentiate between them. Through carefully analyzing, we have been able to identify more than 150 individual leopards from the block one of Yal National Park, of which about 75 individuals have been sighted within the last two years. Out of the 150 published profiles, 76 are females and 74 are males. Currently, we are following 27 family lineages separately. And out of 27, we have extensive data on four proud females who have at least three documented generations and 
few more females with three, four litres. We have also identified about 25 individuals from the Block 5 of Yala National Park. Wilpatu National Park isn't trailing far behind, with about 70 leopards photographed and identified so far. And most importantly, we have been able to draw approximate territory maps for each individual leopard based on our record keeping. This has helped us to track our leopards with ease and meaning for our valued guests. Planning a safari has never been more fun and exciting until now. The database and the website would be constantly updated and will most definitely evolve over time. Let me tell you the story of a female leopard who was born to the north of the Yala Block 1. One day she decides to leave her mother's territory at the age of 2 years. She appears again, this time from the southern border of Yala Block 1. This is a strong indicator as to why we need to take proactive measures to protect and conserve the buffer zones and why need to have more wildlife corridors connecting protected areas. Just like that, knowing where to look and how to identify an animal is very helpful as it allows us to monitor the movements of individuals within a population and to better understand the behavior of that animal. Making our database public allows us to raise awareness and allows others in conservation, tourism or research to make use of data we have recorded. Training is the critical missing link in the conservation tourism landscape in Sri Lanka. It is the foundation stone that is essential for a healthy ecosystem. This is where leopard trails can step in within its in-house developed training programs. After first running training courses for private sector safari guides, earlier this year, our guiding team conducted a successful training for senior department of wildlife conservation staff and in the future, we hope to conduct training for the wider community safari drivers using online learning tools and in-person presentations. Overall, this creates a culture of storytelling, guiding and nature interpretation as opposed to rushing to any sightings and staying silent with no interpretation. Sri Lanka has some special wildlife spectacles and wilderness areas beyond the leopards of Yala and Vilpattu. Parks such as Minnere, Kaudulla, Maduroya and Kalava attract a large amount of elephants in the dry season as receding water lines of reservoirs attract elephants which feed on the fresh green grass. Around May, June, uh, when palu trees are in fruit, sloth bear sightings tend to increase in the dry zone jungles of Sri Lanka. Migratory birds uh, during the northeast monsoon endemic birds in Singharaja, whales and dolphins, high densities of mugger crocodiles and a wide range of highland and lowland habitats are just some of the attractions worth exploring.